another winter, another journey. They travelled under armed escort and on foot, with forced night marches through freezing rain and fog. A cold of such intensity prevailed that year that none could recall its like. To melt water from the springs, a great fire had to be lit and kept burning for hours. When they arrived in Adrianople, they were kenneled in cold and drafty houses before being brought to this building, now carefully restored. It was here that Baha'u'llah was poisoned by those who were envious of his power, and from here that he sent his first challenge to the rulers of the world. It was an outrageous thing to do by any standards. He was a prisoner, an exile. They were emperors and kings, but he had a mandate to fulfill, and a different kind of power. O king, I was but a man like others, asleep on my couch, when the breezes of the all-glorious were wafted over me, and taught the knowledge of all that has been. This thing is not from me, but from one who is almighty and all-knowing. He challenged them to unite and fortify their alliances rather than their borders. O rulers of the earth, be reconciled among yourselves. Should any one among you take arms against another, rise ye all against him, for this is naught but manifest justice. He warned them against fundamentalism and intolerance. Religious fanaticism and hatred are a world-devouring fire, a desolating affliction, whose violence none can quench. He urged them to distribute wealth more evenly. Overstep not the bounds of moderation. Some possess of an affluent fortune, whilst others are in abject poverty. He drew their attention to human rights. Denied this right himself, he became the advocate of all who suffered from injustice. Know ye not why we created you all from the same dust? If ye fail to safeguard the rights of the downtrodden, what right have ye to vaunt yourselves among men? Finally, he warned the kings and rulers that if his solutions were ignored, the consequences would be dire indeed, for them and for their people. And his words have been echoed by the rest of us ever since. How long will humanity persist in its waywardness? How long will injustice continue? How long is chaos and confusion to reign amongst men? How long will discord agitate the face of society? But the rulers at that time took no heed of his warnings. Tell the king that his territory will pass out of his hands and his affairs will be thrown into confusion. Not I speak these words, but God speaketh them. Baha'u'llah was writing these words in 1868 when the last edict of banishment came, issued by Sultan Abdul Aziz himself. One morning, early, the house was surrounded by soldiers. Guards were posted at the gates. Everyone summoned for interrogations. They were ordered to make ready for immediate departure. But no one knew where they were going this time. of the God of Israel came from the way of the east like a noise of many waters.
By a strange twist of fate, Baha'u'llah, who claimed to be the return of God's messengers and the fulfillment of their prophecies, had been sent to the land associated with so many of God's messengers and the focal point of so many religions. His final banishment had brought him to Akka in the Holy Land. The one they called the God of the Persians had been exiled to the ancient port of Ptolemais, the fortress city of Saint Jean d'Arc of the Crusaders, the meeting ground of Christian, Muslim and of Jew. And here he was imprisoned for life among murderers and thieves in the penal colony of the Turkish Empire. The metropolis of the Owl. The most desolate of the cities of the world. The most unsightly in appearance. The most detestable in climate and the foulest in water. A darksome well, a blind pit, a place where no voice can be heard except the sound of the echo, where all the gates of ease and comfort are shut against us and thick darkness appears to have compassed us on every side. Hello. cell for over two years and they were some of the most sorrow-filled years of his life isolated from all except his immediate family by the Sultan's decree under strict surveillance and alone he paced this room from wall to wall and knew it stone by stone <laughs> Baha'u'llah called Akka the most great prison. Many who'd walked for months to see him were turned away disconsolate from here and had to stand waiting on the sea wall for days, hoping to catch a glimpse of him or see his hand waving fleetingly at the prison window. It was during this lonely time that Baha'u'llah lost his youngest son, who fell fatally from the prison roof one summer's night. His broken body was tossed into a shallow pauper's grave, here, outside the city walls. A brief life, a brutal death. 